Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple, and two and a half years ago, Coral and I embarked on this little property reno project, and uh, this little cabin's kind of getting to be the way we like it. And uh, yeah, the RVing is on hold. This is our RVing that's happening right now. It's all right there, and we're enjoying the great indoors uh, from time to time. So it's all good. And uh, two years ago, we made a decision uh, not entirely our decision to put in this little gas fireplace. And when I say not entirely our decision, uh, this, uh, this was a wood burning fireplace for the last, I don't know, 80 years or something like that. And uh, uh, it spectacularly failed the test uh, to uh, allow us to get insurance, you know, all of that good stuff. So we replaced it. And at the time, uh, Coral had, had gone through a selection process on fireplaces, and when it was installed, uh, I remember this installer saying something about, oh yeah, here's a little remote control, and we probably said, oh, cool, or something like that. Well, hey, <laughs> all of the questions one doesn't ask, right? You see, during the winter, we actually prefer the heat that th comes out of this little unit over what comes out of our HVAC system. There's just something about a fireplace. Further to that, there's uh, a practical aspect. We get power outages out here unexpectedly, and we could be gone for a day or two or whatever, and so we don't rely on the HVAC to keep things from freezing up here during the winter. This little propane fireplace has proven to be super reliable and it heats uh, most of the living area. So we get up yesterday morning and uh, this little guy was just completely dead. We're gonna close, I, yeah, I think it's just gonna show a bunch of eights. Yeah, that's exactly the way we found it. We ran some, ran some diagnostic tests uh, and bypassed the installer and went right to the wholesale distributor, found a knowledgeable person there, and he said, you're absolutely right, it's dead. And then he gave us some good news and some bad news. And stay tuned, because uh, we're not gonna be talking just about fireplaces. We're gonna talk a little bit about a very similar recent John Deere experience that has me thinking hard about how manufacturers intentionally build in planned obsolescence and increased year-over-year -year reliability post-purchase. Coming at ya. So, let's finish up this little fireplace story and then we're gonna talk some tractor. So, the good news is that the distributor had one of these, a replacement unit, in stock, matched up perfectly. The bad news is it cost $170, and that's only the beginning. Then, it takes about 20 minutes to set this up, put all our personal preferences back in, uh, the uh, temperature settings, the time settings, you know the usual stuff, all the stuff we have to reset in our houses after the power goes out. Then we had to pull uh, not one, but two of these uh, fronts, that's a two-piece assembly off of here, and fiddle around with the master control unit that's in the back, and get these two systems talking to each other, that after reorienting ourselves with the manual and all the fine points of that so there we go this is going to be an annual experience now uh, a couple of things we can't couldn't even have gotten this fireplace with the manual control so those were the good old days when we used to flip on a switch off an on off switch a toggle switch and uh, uh, and then rotate a rotary dial for temperature control you know uh, yeah, I'm old, but I'm not an in invalid, <laughs> and I don't mind walking across the room to do something like that. So, uh, let's think about this for a minute. We dropped something around $3,000 on the fireplace unit, and uh, now we're in for $170 a year for this. 
So I'm hoping that this uh, amazing little unit lasts 18 or 20 years. So far, no indications that it shouldn't. So if we think about that, over the course of those 18 or so years, we're gonna spend as much on remote controls. The distributor was really clear and said, yeah, he wasn't at all surprised that our unit had failed. Uh, you're gonna be in getting one of these once a year. So plan for that. Uh, these units also, I would be shocked if this cost the manufacturer anything more than $20. Uh, and so they're gonna make a high margin sale once a year that over the course of 18 years equates to the original cost of the fireplace. Hey, doesn't this is sounding more and more like what software companies have been doing to us for decades. So there you go, it's up and running. I'm older and wiser, but I'm going to think long and hard on future purchases about the long tail of financial obligations that uh, accompany those purchases. Enough of that, let's talk tractor. Okay. So a couple of days ago, we're doing some work on the far corner of the property and I took the 4066 down and Coral came down with the little 1025 carrying a load of supplies. And when she arrived at the project site, she said, you know, Howard, it doesn't sound right. And it seems like it's really low on power. And so being somewhat skeptical of Me Coral's mechanical prowess, I just gave a throwaway comment like, well, you know what, it would help if you put it into low range when you're coming up that hill and thought nothing more about it. But Coral did keep thinking about it. So when we had the project finished and we're going to return the equipment back to the uh, equipment sheds, uh, she jumped on the 4066, which is a little bit of a warmer ride experience as well, and left me on the 1025. Well, I gotta tell you, we have a little incline coming up our driveway past the porch over there, and it barely made it. And so when it, I got it up here on the level ground, I pulled it over to just about where it is right now, and I came down here, and I pulled the fuel filter to see if it was plugged, to see if there was any uh, signs of water being in the fuel. I made sure I had fuel conditioner in it. I ran it, I ran it around the yard a little more and it just kept getting progressively worse. So I dug out the flat deck trailer over there, hooked it up to the F-350. And of course it's a tilt deck. This machine was barely able to back up onto the tilt deck uh, so that I could lower it and, and chain it down. Well, let's fast forward because I was taking it into the dealer. I had done everything that my mechanical ability on a diesel equips me to do. And uh, $700 and two days later, I emerged with, guess what? a new fuel pump. So this machine is five years old and I checked the hour meter when I rolled it out this morning. It's not showing on there right now because it's off, but there's 311 hours on it. So let's do the math on this again. Howard the nerd who tracks expenses and breaks them down into annual costs. The cost of maintaining the fuel pump on this machine $140 a year. That is just nuts. And I asked the dealer, what's going on with this? And they said, well, you know, maybe you don't always add fuel additive, which I always do. And um, maybe uh, they had a couple of other just really vague things that made no sense to me at all, including one, uh, if you've run it out of fuel, that can be really hard on a fuel pump. We've never run it out of fuel. In fact, our rule around here is never let a tank go below one half. You never know when somebody needs it, jumps onto it, and the last thing they're thinking about is fueling. You, and it's just, so there's a point in all of this. It seems like in attempting to move forward and progress, we've made life significantly worse for ourselves. Come on over to this little Ferguson here for a minute. So uh, a couple of things, and these are just small things, but we're talking about the cost of equipment ownership here. And so the parking brake on this fine piece of equipment, which you set by pushing down here and then you flip a switch over there, uh, I've had to have the dealer get involved twice. 
Not the dealer's fault, not the manufacturer's fault, and I'm not implying that. But one of the times there was a stick got lodged up in underneath here and impacted the mechanism and kind of tweaked one of the linkages. But does it really have to be that complicated? Take a look at this. This is my parking brake on the 53 Ferguson. There we go. You know what? In 70 years, that has never given any operator a moment's problem. We've owned it. Our families owned it for 58 of the 70 years. So I can speak to those 58 years with assurance. Something simple like a hood latch on here. This is just crazy. There's apparently to make my life eminently easy, a button over there on the outside, I'm kind of pointing at it. Carl's gonna go around and get a view. Then there's this snaky looking piece of metal that comes all the way over here and up into here, all to release the hood. It doesn't work. I was so frustrated with it one day and I had things to do. I literally took a pry bar and broke this and I don't care. Now I can open the hood when I want. Oh yeah, this is a tough hood opening on this machine. Yeah, really complicated. And no, we've never had to replace the fuel pump. You know why? <laughs> Here's the fuel tank. There's a line that comes down from under the fuel tank right down here at gravity feed into the carburetor. No, I know, I'm not confused about my engines. On a diesel, you do need a fuel pump. The point being on a little unit like this, do I need a diesel? That's the point. And so once again, like my dad would say, Howard, I think you did it to yourself. Yes, I did, Dad. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a link in here. One of my favorite people is uh, Pete from Just A Few Acres Farms, and I'm throwing the link into the comments section. You know what Pete does? I don't think that Pete honestly has a tractor on his farm, and he's got several of them, that's newer than 40 years old. So newer than, pick a number here, where are we at? 1973 or something like that. Uh, 83? 83, that would be. Yeah, most of his tractors are older than that. And he repairs them himself. He's not running them back into the dealer. And even his most complex tractor, which he'll talk about in the video link that I'll provide, he's able to do the repairs on it. You know, yeah, it really gets one thinking. Have we made progress? And there we have it. This concludes part three of the series about the initial purchase price is not really the price.